united in heart and spirit, we gather together virtually as the Oblet family. And remembering our theme of this year, Lourdes bringing us together, we invite you, whoever you are, wherever you are, however you are feeling, to join us for this celebration of our Sunday Mass. Pope Francis reminds us, the current pandemic has highlighted our interdependence. We are all connected to each other, for better or for worse. Therefore, to emerge from this crisis better than before, we have to do so together. Together, not alone. Together, not alone because it cannot be done. Either it is done together or it is not done. We must do it together, all of us, in solidarity. So we gather as a family on a pilgrimage journey together, aware that Jesus is with us in whatever we are experiencing in our lives. Jesus, is always by our side. He will never abandon us. With Mary, our mother, let us place all our hope in him. United in heart and mind and placing our hope in God, we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we gather the invitation from the readings of today, especially the Gospel, is to allow Christ to change how we see ourselves and one another. If we find ourselves in moments of darkness or stress, moments of uncertainty, we allow the Lord to change it for us. And so we take a moment to recognize what it is that we want the Lord to heal, to strengthen, to affirm in us. Have mercy on us, O God, for we have sinned against you. Show us, Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And we pray. That God will keep us faithful in his service. Almighty God, our creator and guide, may we serve you with all our heart and know your forgiveness in our lives. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives, who reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. And so we listen to the word of God. A reading from the letter of St. James. Wherever you find jealousy and ambition, you find disharmony and wicked things of every kind being done. Whereas the wisdom that comes down from above is essentially something pure. It also makes for peace and is kindly and considerate. It is full of compassion and shows itself by doing good. Nor is there trace nor is there any trace of partiality or hypocrisy in it. Peacemakers, when they work for peace, sow the seeds which will bear fruit in holiness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the light of the world, says the Lord. Anyone who follows me will have the light of life. <coughs> The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples made their way through Galilee, and he did not want anyone to know because he was instructing his disciples. He was telling them, The Son of Man will be delivered into the hands of people. They will put him to death, and three days after he has been put to death, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he said and were afraid to ask him. They came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the road? They said nothing, because they had been arguing which of them was the greatest. So he sat down, called the twelve to him, and said, if anyone wants to be first, he must make himself last of all and servant of all. He then took a little child, set him in front of them, put his arms around him and said to them, Anyone who welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me welcomes not me alone, but the one who sent me. The good news, the gospel of the Lord. Jesus has this uncanny ability to, to turn things upside down for us. Two examples from the gospel today kind of helps us to understand something about who Jesus is for us and what he asks of us in return. The first is that whatever is happening in our lives, and especially when we encounter struggle or we encounter moments that don't really somehow are life-giving for us. They could be because someone we love is ill, or it could be that we have lost someone who was very much part of our lives for 20, 30, or 60 years. Or it could be that you're struggling with your own infirmity, or that energy that you used to have when you were 20 is no longer there when you're much older. Jesus reminds us that those moments are not moments of hopelessness or moments to give up, but to recognize that in the passion, there is always the resurrection. When he speaks about facing his own death, he just doesn't leave it there. He always says, and rise again on the third day. The resurrection is promised because Jesus is not only one of us, but he is God with us, and with God all things are possible. And that's the faith that we're asked to grasp, to hold, and to live. The second is how he turns upside down our desire to be the greatest or the best, our desire to be the first and to be on top, and yet he chooses a child he calls us to be servants. He turns things around for us to recognize it's not the brilliant and the powerful or the significant that matter to God. Every person matters. Every person that we might think below us matters to God as much as someone we respect and highly regard. And so to follow Christ is to follow the cross with the hope of the resurrection 
but it's also to follow Christ as one who serves me and calls me to serve others. Lourdes is an invitation to recognize the little people, the small people, the one who are, ones who are struggling, and to be able to serve them and to help every person to know that God is with us. And just as that invitation at the beginning of our Mass said, to place our hope in God. And so as we now recall those who have journeyed with us in Lourdes, we place them and ourselves in the embrace of God. Since 1883, the first time a pilgrimage left from these islands to travel to Lourdes, many people have traveled as part of the Oblate pilgrimage in answer to the call of Our Lady to come in procession. Each pilgrim who goes to Lourdes makes their own unique and sacred journey, and it helps in to make our time together both prayerful and memorable. So many people are part of our pilgrimage story, and it is important that we remember them. And today, in a special way during this Mass, we pray for those who have been part of this pilgrimage family who've gone before us. So I now invite Mary Trace to bring forward our Book of Remembrance for the Pilgrimage, and we place it here at the feet of Our Lady remembering all who have served on our pilgrimage in Lord. Tender and loving God, we give thanks for the gift of those who have shared our pilgrimage journey and whose names are recorded in our books of remembrance. Keep them safely in your care. Accept our prayers for those who have died in Christ and who are buried with him in the sure and certain hope of rising again. Compassionate God, we bring to you members of our Oblet family who have died and are close to our hearts, and we remember especially those who have died in the last year. Mary Cal, Sister Pilgrim. Tony Malone, Assisted Pilgrim Dermot Derry Whelan Brancardier Michael McHugh Brancardier Paul Geraghty Assisted Pilgrim Connor Cronin Brother of Dr. Sinead Teresa O'Brien, Handmaid. Josephine Colonnade, sister of Jennifer and Jeanette Colonnade. Teeny Smith, sister of Father Vincent Mulligan. James Cross, a sister pilgrim. Andrew White, Assisted Pilgrim Dennis Dinny Duffy 
husband of Mary Duffy, Pat Ling Broncardier, Mary Dwyer, Bridget Dwyer's mother, Together we pray. Eternal rests grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. I now invite you to join with me as together we offer our prayer of remembrance. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember, we remember them. them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember, we remember them. them. When we have joys, we yearn to share, we remember, we remember them. them. So long as we live, they too shall live, for they are now a part of us as we remember them. Tender and compassionate God, we offer our prayer of thankfulness and gratefulness for those who have been part of our lives, who have shared in our pilgrimage, and whom we are now remembering this day. We are thankful for those who continue to love, support, and encourage us. We ask that you continue to be the light in the dark for us, giving us hope, encouragement, and direction. As we remember our dead, may we continue to live our daily lives, treasuring the memories of these special people, and may we bring your light and life to others. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we continue our prayer. The prayers we have in our hearts, the prayers we pray for one another for the church. Let us pray for all who are gravely ill with the coronavirus, here at home and especially in the developing world. May they know your comfort and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for frontline workers, health workers, doctors, nurses, carers, and medical researchers, that through their skills and insights, people may be restored to health. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who are bereaved. Help these families and friends as they struggle to come to terms with the grief and loss. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pay, pray for a fair and equal distribution of vaccines. May the poor of the world and the forgotten or left behind be helped. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Mary, our mother, you stood at the foot of the cross of Jesus, your son, and endured much pain, loss, and grief. May we ask your intercession as we pray. Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, grace the, the Lord is with thee. you. Blessed are you among women, women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God pray, pray for, for us sinners, sinners now, now and at, at the, the hour, hour of our death. death. Amen. Amen. Loving God, we place before you all our prayers, those spoken aloud and those we hold in our heart, through Christ our Lord.
pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God the Almighty. Lord, hear the prayers of your family and receive our gifts. May the worship of each one bring salvation to all. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with the choirs of heaven, we proclaim your glory as without end we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and he gave you thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And together we proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one 
by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Dermot, our Bishop, the clergy, and all who minister in your name. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, the Apostles, St. Eugene, St. Bernadette, and all the saints whose constant intercession we rely for help. May we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. And so confident in the love of God for us, trusting in the words of Jesus, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we come to pray for that gift of Christ's peace, Maybe just to call to mind the people, the events in your life where peace is needed. As we place the, those events and those peoples before the Lord, we pray, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And we share that peace of Christ with one another and those beside us. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are all, called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting.
Nourished by this food from heaven, let us turn in prayer to Our Lady of Lourdes. Mary, help our faith. Open our ear to hear God's word and to recognize his voice and call. Help us to be touched by his love, that we may touch him in faith. Help us to entrust ourselves fully to him and to believe in his love, especially at times of trial, beneath the shadow of the cross, when our faith is called to mature. So in our faith, the joy of the risen one. Remind us that those who believe are never alone. Teach us to see all things with the eyes of Jesus, that he may be light for our path. And may this light of faith always increase in us until the dawn of that undying day, which is Christ himself, your Son, our Lord. The announcements this morning. Today's Mass will be followed at 12 noon by the lighting of the pilgrimage candle here at the Grotto in Inchicore, Ireland. At 7 p.m. this evening, there is an opportunity to join a time of meditation and prayer, which will be led by Father Ray Warren in London. And this time will include uh, an opportunity for some personal sharing in breakout sessions. If you wish to take part in this time, please register online at oblets.ie. And on the oblets.ie website, you'll find the full programme for our pilgrimage. Tomorrow, Monday, will, there will be morning prayer available from 8.30 a.m. Tomorrow's Mass is coming directly to us from the Grotto in Lourdes, and the celebrant will be Monsignor Javier de Rode. I want to remind you again that there's an opportunity if you wish to submit petitions or if you wish to have a candle lit here at the Grotto, you can do so via the website at oblets.ie or you can email to lourdes at oblets.ie or phone the mission office. And don't forget that all petitions submitted will be brought out and placed in the Grotto in Lourdes in France. So we hope you will continue to join us for these services. And if you can't attend at the time that they're on, you will be able to catch them on the website, oblets.ie. Just in case you're wondering who are the celebrants with me, you all know Father Lawkin, who is our pilgrimage director, but Father Vincent Mulligan is our last pilgrimage director that we had succeeding then with Father Lawkin. So welcome to Father Vincent uh, for joining us in this Mass. Thank you. Who's also an honorary chaplain of the Shrine in Lourdes. So let us pray, my friends. Lord, may the Eucharist you have given us influence our thoughts and our actions. May your Spirit guide and direct us in your way. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you and all your loved ones, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, remain always in the peace of Christ.